Hey everyone, welcome to Craving Something Scary, where it's all horror all the time. Now in this video, I'm going to discuss the theory that Stu Mocker could be unveiled in Scream 7 as the mastermind behind the events of Scream 5 and Scream 6. Now there have been plenty of uh, breadcrumbs and subtle clues given in both of these films that when put together provide a very interesting case pointing to Stu Mocker not only being alive but also being the mastermind of what we have seen unfold on the screen in both films. Now, Radio Silence, along with writers James Vanderbilt and Guy Busick, have made it abundantly clear that any past character can return to the franchise in the current structure they are creating. Furthermore, characters in this current Scream universe can withstand superhuman amounts of stab wounds and injuries yet still survive. So the question is really no longer if Stu is alive or not, because his injuries would be considered mild in comparison to what some of the current characters have endured and still live today. So with Stu being alive, the only question left to be answered is, will he be unveiled as the mastermind in Scream 7? Or does the creative team have even longer term plans in mind. Let's go! Hi, my name is Michelle La Liberté. I'm the production designer on Scream 6, and you're watching Craven Something Scary. So when it comes to the incredible character of Stu Mocker, we need to start at the beginning. Now, I believe he's often one of the most misunderstood characters in the Scream franchise by far. So let's dive in and I'll explain exactly what I mean. From the outside, Stu appeared to be just an average teenager, I know, a member of the popular clique. But beneath that innocent facade lurked a sinister genius, and you never suspected him, and that's what made him so terrifying. He could blend in with everyone else, all while plotting with Billy all the horrific acts they were going to carry out. So Stu exhibited signs of uh, psychopathy and a profound understanding of human psychology. His ability to deceive and manipulate others was truly chilling. And I mean, think back to the film and remember all the scenes we see him in He's so charismatic, he's so, he's just really seems to be the life of the party, right? And blending in seems to be your best friend. And all the while, it's all, it's all a facade, it's all fake. The guy is, is, is a absolute psychopath at the end of the day. And he was brilliant at it, that was his thing. It was all, it was all to get you to the place he wanted to get you at, to manipulate you, so that you would trust him, so then he could then turn on you to his real intentions, or turn on you, I should say, for his real intentions of killing you. That's that's exactly what he did. So, so Stu Mocker was a classic case of a manipulative psychopath. His ability to charm and manipulate those around him was remarkable. Stu meticulously planned each step with Billy always one move ahead of anyone suspecting him. And he craved attention. He sought to immortalize himself through these murders. Now we know by what little information Wes Craven gave us in the movie about his home life, that his parents were probably more absentee parents than they were in part of his life. I mean, remember the note on the fridge wishing him a happy birthday. You know, they were out of town. They weren't even there on his birthday. It was just a little note on like a sticky note. And so the behavior that he exhibited in this film is in line with someone who's starving for acceptance and attention and power because he probably felt powerless growing up in that type of environment. If his parents were truly that way, 
And there were signs of some deep-seated psychological issues in Stu's past. Maybe childhood trauma, perhaps, even, that could have warped his perception of reality. Now, you may be thinking, how can I jump to that assumption? Well, outside of murdering people, okay, that's a big one, obviously. Don't forget that one scene when, when Sydney is running upstairs um, to the attic to try to get out of the house when she's being chased by Ghostface. It's a short scene, but if you notice, and if you go back, you can pause it and see it clearly. There are dolls hanging from the ceiling in the attic. I mean, it's very disturbing, these, these dolls hanging by their necks. And so it, it's just one, again, a nonverbal, subtle thing that Wes put in the film to demonstrate Stu's mental state and his instability. I mean, this is a kid that's up there hanging dolls, uh, basically murdering dolls in the, in the attic, clearly showing that there's some significant issues going on here, uh, mental issues with Stu. And, and these weren't overnight. These probably were very, again, deep-seated, growing his entire life until finally he becomes best friends with Billy, uh, assumingly in high school, and their relationship was like a match to a fuse, and it lit everything up. And it resulted in this uncontrollable fire that could only be quenched with blood, the blood of others through murder. That's where that was the ultimate crescendo of this thing, of his life. So, and you know, the final point about this family dynamic with his parents, this is just something I want to mention. Remember when he was on the phone with Sydney in the kitchen at the end and she informed him that she had called the police? Remember what he said? And we all laughed because it's a funny line. He said, my mom and dad are going to be so mad at me. Remember? And he was crying. But think about that for a second. He was more worried about his parents' reaction and what they were going to do and think than he was about the police coming and how he would be treated in prison. All of those things, it was, no, it was, it was my mom and dad are going to be mad at me. It was like, again, seeking that approval. It was that, that family dynamic that was clearly off. It was clearly not right. So... Again, it's a funny moment in the movie, but it has a real undercurrent that points to something deeper. So that, in a brief manner of speaking, summarizes the character of Stu Mocker. Now, let's fast forward to the events of Scream 5 and 6. There are several breadcrumbs and clues in each film that point to Stu being involved in both movies. Now, I can't go into detail here for what those are, because it literally would be a 30 to 45 minute video or longer. But listen, I have already made videos pointing out what these clues are. They're on the channel right now. If you go and you hit videos, just search in the little search bar on the channel, search Stu. Just put the word Stu in and you'll see several videos there and the clues for both five and six. Watch those videos and you'll get a much more detail about the clues. But they're out there. I just can't get into them all here. But they are there. So here we are now facing a Scream 7. It has not been announced. But I think we all would agree in the very near future it will be. They're just working on things, contracts, what have you. Now, the question I have is whether or not they will reveal Stu as the mastermind of 5 and 6. Or will they wait to unveil him? and let's say Scream 8 or later. And ultimately it depends on what the writer's plans are, right, of course. We don't know what that is. Now, I personally hope they pull the trigger in Scream 7 and we get that return of Stu Mocker in the next film. So real quickly, I'm just gonna give you a scenario of what I would like to see for Stu's unveiling, the unveiling of the mastermind here in Scream 7. And basically it's about five bullet points, if you will, of what how I wanna see it unfold. Number one, in addition to Stu being a part of this whole thing, obviously, I wanna see Sydney return to the story. 
It's important to me that Sydney's there. Now, I want to I want to be clear. Sydney does not have to be in the movie for Stu to return. I completely disagree with the mindset that they that she has to be in it for Stu to be in it. I don't think so. Because I think there's enough there. You, as long as Sam is there, there is enough material and motive to have Stu back without Sydney. I think you can write a good story for that. However, my personal desire is, of course, Sydney's back. I want her back because I do want that final showdown one last time, seeing the two of them together. So I want Sydney back in seven and written in as a key part of the film. And number two, I want Stu to be revealed to us, the viewer, early in the film, but not to the characters. So only we, as the viewer of the movie, as we're watching it, we know Stu's there and involved. The characters don't know until the reveal at the end. But I don't want to wait and see Stu only at the unmasking in the third act. I want to know Stu's there early, and I want to know that we're seeing him uh, engage and you know and, and be on screen throughout the film so we get to enjoy him not just in the final 15 minutes okay so that's what i want to see now Stu will look different than he did at 17 remember we're, he's, he's he's nearly 50 years old so he's not going to be that 17 year old kid that we all remember in scream um you know he's going to look different than he did and with the tv that fell on him he may even have some scarring possibly or some plastic surgery done although remember he did brace the impact of that television falling with both hands it's very clear he's got both hands up so it would have it did lessen the impact of the tv hitting him when it fell but even then i'll, I'll grant that it could be some plastic surgery was done so he may have a little bit of a different look then we remember him as as well. And that's cool. If they go that route, I'd be fine with that. But I want to see Stu infiltrate the life of one of the core four as his ultimate plan is to get close to Sam with the hopes that he can have a connection with her similar to what he had with her father. So Stu wants to restore the Loomis connection and if he can do that and manipulate Sam to give in to the dark side within her, which again, in Scream 6, we're just continuing to see her struggle with that inner Loomis, the inner Billy Loomis, the, the dark side within her. If he could get her to give in and surrender to that dark side that's always there, they could kill together. And it would be Stu and Billy's daughter slicing and dicing together again. So it'd be like a Loomis back with, with Stu. But if Sam will not turn and she resists Stu's urges to manipulate her to turn, then Stu would turn on her and she would then become his target to kill. And that's when things will get interesting. And I think Sydney would be brought into the, into the picture and it would get crazy now in the meantime though while that's trying to happen you see Stu would be killing all those around sam so all the characters introduced in scream seven and yes poor danny brackett the survivor the only survivor of any new character in six would be one of the first to go in seven because he would be a huge obstacle for Stu. he's going to want to remove danny brackett quickly so I could see Danny being the opening kill in this scenario, get him out early. So he would eliminate him really fast. And Stu, of course, would have accomplices because as I've stated in previous videos, guys, I believe Stu Mocker created the dreaded thread from Scream 5 where Richie and Amber were recruited. And I also believe that Jason and Greg from Scream 6 also responded to the same dreaded thread. Remember Jason's motive for killing in Greg it was to finish Richie's movie. There was a direct connection to Richie with Jason and Greg, and all of that originated from the dreaded thread. I believe that is a connection. So I think Stu is literally recruiting ghost face killers across the country, much like a ghost face cult, you could call it. 
and wherever he goes, he can call them up and they will assist him as he did with Richie and Amber in Woodsboro and Jason and Greg in New York. And, you know, for at least a short time <laughs> until the Baileys came in and took care of that. But Jason did get one great kill in with killing Laura in the alley. That was a great opening. But my point is, those are connected. I believe they are. I believe all that's connected and Stu created that, that thread. He's the mastermind. And then finally, guys, it would culminate in the final showdown where Sydney would face off with Stu one final time. And it would end with her killing Stu in a, such a severe and brutal way. It would be something like a decapitation or better yet, even like a Michael Myers Halloween ends meat grinder type of an ending where it's just like, oh my gosh, it's so over the top. He is so dead. But what an amazing finale that would be to see Sydney and Stu just one more time going at it to the very bitter end. It would be amazing. Now look, guys, I could keep going on, but this is, you know, I meant my intention was to give you guys a summary of how I would like to see Stu Mocker unveiled as the mastermind in Scream 7 for this current trilogy. And this is a brief summary of how I'd like to see it go down for the film. All right, guys, listen, I'll leave it there. Lots to think about. I would not, and I want to know what you think about my theory and ideas about Stu. And I want to know your ideas, your thoughts, ideas, and theories about Stu Mocker coming back, possibly being, you know, unveiled as the mastermind. Uh, do you like the idea? Do you not like the idea? Or do you have something else in mind? Uh, how would you see Stu coming back? Do you see it coming out in a different way than, than what I proposed? I would love just to see your thoughts on it. You know, I enjoy reading your theories and what you guys all come up with. So leave your comments in the uh, comment section right now. Start typing as the video is winding down. I want to see what you're thinking about in this when it comes to Stu. And we can discuss it together. All right. But that's going to be all for this update. But listen, I'll be back soon with more Scream and other horror movie content. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, this is Craving Something Scary, where it's all horror all the time. Thanks for watching.